Good evening and welcome to UC Santa Barbara's webinar series. Tonight, our topic of conversation is health professions. You don't just have to be a doctor. There's so many great options and opportunities for students who are thinking of a career in the medical field. Now, my name is Kuka Acosta. I'm actually the Associate Director for Admission here at UC Santa Barbara, home of the Gauchos. I'm happy to welcome you to our webinar tonight. Note that if there are some very technical questions, I might defer you to our health advisors or at least seek their opinion for an answer. But if you do have questions, I hope you'll ask them of us during tonight's webinar. Let's get started. Now, health careers and undergraduate preparation. You know this, right? In the United States, most health careers are postgraduate. And for many students, the idea is I'm going to be a doctor. And right now, with what's happening with the pandemic in the United States and across the globe, many individuals are realizing that it's not just doctors that are on the front lines helping people. It's that x-ray technician. It's that individual who's working, um, the, uh, the social worker. It's the dentist. It's the pharmacist. It's a whole array of individual fields that come together to create a health profession. We're excited that our students think broadly at UCSB about these health professions and find their right fit. Sometimes, yes, it could be being the physician, but sometimes it might be being the physician's assistant. It might be that you're thinking, I want to be a dentist, or maybe it's a dental assistant. Maybe it's that you know you want to go in, be a vet. A vet. Maybe it's looking at things that are not always on the beaten path. We're excited that you're looking and considering all of these different options and figuring out what is the right fit for you. Now, we're gonna start with some general information about UCSB. Now, some students know exactly what medical field they want to go into, and other students have a general idea that they want to help individuals. So Santa Barbara happens to have an extensive career services unit. And in that career services, what we find is we've had um, a creation of our career paths or career tracks. Now, these tracks are inclusive of a science and health field. So that's where at UCSB, we have in our career services, an advisor who will help students understand their talents as it relates to a potential major. Yes, I could be a biology student, or yes, I could be a global studies major. I can go into economics, or I can go into chemistry. There's so many different options, and we want our students to explore their interests and their passion for coursework and study while they're at UCSB. Some students don't know their major, and that's why career services is a great place to start. They can find themselves taking placement exams to see what is the type of major that they should be going into. Some students will take different coursework and curriculum to see, all right, what is the right health field for me as well. We do love that our students have access to a dedicated advisor who understands the requirements of the different majors that we have at UCSB and how they can overlap with some curriculum across different disciplines. So you might be a communication major, but you're minoring in biology to get all of those science coursework requirements for your post-grad education. What? craziness i tell you it's true so many of our students find that they're looking at a very narrow path they saw it on tv they saw it on in a movie you have to be a biology major in order to go to a medical field mm, no my friends that's not necessarily true and you can talk to medical school admissions requirements or advisors i should say about that there are set courses that students have to complete, but their major doesn't have to have one set title, which is really exciting. Specifically, if you know you have a passion for something like um, global studies, for something like chemistry, for something like aquatic biology, you'll find that many of our students will find their major at UCSB. Now, I do want to point out, because I'm in the Office of Admissions, what this means for our applicants. When it comes to UCSB in our College of Letters and Science, we do not admit by major for our freshman applicants. What? Say that one more time. Okay, I will. We do not admit by major. So if you're a freshman applicant, if you're a high school student gang, okay, I want to go to UCSB, 
our College of Letters and Science houses uh, about 80 different majors. And UCSB students can also say, I'm undeclared. I don't know my major. For many of our students who have a health field in mind, what they tend to do is they tend to apply in undeclared thinking, oh, it's too competitive to go into biology or to go into chemistry. I'm going to sneak in. Do, 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 do. No, my friends, no, 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 no need to do that. We don't admit by major. So if there's a hundred biologies or a hundred chemistries or a hundred film students at UCSB, it makes no difference to us because we're not looking at spot allocation for freshman applicants. Okay, I've said freshman more than once. What about transfer? If you're coming from a community college, note that our transfer students in our biology majors, our math majors, and our economics majors, there is major preparation for those students. So there are set classes. So we will select uh, in those particular areas based off of major preparation. So there is a slight difference there. All right, so let me bring you back to career services. I do have a website on the bottom of the screen where you can see some of those science and health tracks and also see what we are looking at when it comes to our advising for our students as they're preparing. Many of our students will use career services at UCSB to look at internships, to prepare for those internships. During internship fairs, they'll look at getting their resume situated. They'll actually have a lot of support for students who are looking at maybe shadowing or going out and getting a better understanding. Career panels will also happen. What does an x-ray technician do? So note that career services is a great place for our students who are still discovering what might be their future in a medical career, not always just being the doctor. Okay, now that's the technical component. Let's talk a little bit about what our students who know they're going into medicine of some sort get from UCSB. We do not have a major that is medicine. We do not have a major that says health in it. And oftentimes students go, oh, well, then never mind. Oh, no, 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 my friend. There are options and opportunities to prepare. If you didn't know this, UC Santa Barbara happens to be almost 90% undergraduate. I always think of that as a bonus for our students. You're not competing with a nursing program or a med school program at the graduate level for faculty attention. You're not competing with those students when it comes to internships in the community. As an undergraduate student, you are the focal point at UCSB. Did you just get excited? I know, it's exciting. Go ahead, get excited. What you're going to find at UCSB is that within our College of Letters and Science, but open to all students, regardless of their major. So that mechanical engineer, that College of Creative Studies student, our pre-health advising suite. Now our health professions advising website is a great starting point. What you're going to find is that there is a tab that says prospective students and parents. We hope that you'll click on that tab and read some great advice that our pre-health advisors have shared just for you. Things like seminars, pre-health tracks, options and opportunities for counseling, and what you can expect if you enroll at UCSB. Now I do wanna warn you, if you're looking to have a one-on-one -on -one sit down with our pre-health advisors, it's not going to be their priority right now. What? Don't get appalled, think about it. My current UCSB students need that one-on-one -on -one advising. My seniors who are about to graduate and my students who are thinking of applying to medical school next year, they need that one-on-one -on -one advising. So they're gonna be my priority. Trust me, you'll thank me about this particular statement if you enroll at UCSB. So what do they do when I am a student? Great question, and the answer is they help you understand the requirements for your given health profession, be it your veterinary school, be it your nursing program that you wanna go into, be it that you're going into a physician's assistant, et cetera, et cetera. They'll have a great repository of understanding of the admissions criteria, but also the selection criteria for those schools. If you're thinking, I wanna go to John Hopkins or I wanna go to UCLA Medical, you know, what are those particular admissions offices looking for? 
and then they'll assist you preparing yourself for those particular programs as well. It might be that they know exactly the type of research that that school is going to. It might be that they'll give you some recommendations about different internships within the community. It's also that they can connect you with student clubs and organizations that are on campus. Our goal at UCSB is that you build a resume that will make you highly competitive to graduate school. And many of our students, as they're building their letters of recommendation, they're building their opportunities to do research on campus, note that this is similar to you in high school building a resume. Think about it. When you're a high school student or when you're at your community college and you're preparing for the university admission process, it's about how can I show my passion and my talent? So as a high school student, you might be doing research or you might be doing an internship or a job shadow. So our goal and our ambition is to make sure that those options and opportunities are accessible to our undergraduate students as well. I'm really excited that Santa Barbara happens to have um, two large hospitals. One, Santa Barbara Goleta Cottage Hospital, happens to be about a mile and a half away from UC Santa Barbara's campus. You're also going to find that we have a large medical suite called Samson Clinics. Now, it's our version of Kaiser. It's a large suite of clinics that do um, dermatology and the nose and throat. They do optometry, they do x-rays, they have laboratories. So many of our students find that that's a great way to see the different resources available in a health field. Whew. All right, you've already started asking questions in the Q&A box. So I'm gonna stop for a second and double check to see if I've missed anything. So first question, if someone is interested in marine biology, can someone who doesn't have that major dabble in something like that? Or do they, can they do research within the ocean? The answer is, yeah, of course. One of the fun things about UCSB is our interdisciplinary nature. Our interdisciplinary nature means that our students are not locked into studying just one thing. That also means that they're not locked into doing research in just one major. You could, in theory, be a student who is studying, let's pretend it's aquatic biology, since that was the question that came up, and you end up really connecting with your chemistry faculty during your chemistry lab series, which is part of the biology requirement, and all of a sudden you just knock on your faculty door going, hey, can I do research? And you might be a biology major, but you might be in a chemistry lab. Or let's go wild and crazy. You take a film studies class as one of your electives, and you end up wanting to do a small documentary on you know, clinics within small neighborhoods. And so you're tying your passions together, movie making and health. So note that for us, interdisciplinary can be academic in the classes that you're taking, and it can be research-based as well. Ooh, did you just get excited? I think you did. I did too. It's so much fun to think of all the different possibilities. Okay, so next question. How many majors does UCSB have? Uh, technically, if you're looking at the major list for our incoming students, you're looking at about 100 different fields. And I'll show you where you can research the different fields accessible to you as an incoming student. All right. Question, do you guys offer public health and what are other majors based on a close or on or close to public health? We do not have a public health major. Again, we do not have a major in medicine. We do not have a public health major, but that doesn't mean our students don't go into those fields. So I wanna point out some of our student organizations which help our students with these particular areas. Santa Barbara has about 500 student clubs and organizations that are registered each year. Now, some of these are more fraternity-based, so we do have a uh, pre-med fraternity on campus. Some of these are based off of cultural aspects. For example, Los Curanderos. If you're Latino, you're like, what? Yes, so our Chicano Latino pre-med or pre-health students you're going to find things that really help our students in different areas. So for those of you who are thinking of that veterinary life, our pre-veterinary medical association. Some of these are based off of an academic platform. Some of these are based off of a social platform, but they're all with an umbrella that includes a health field. 
Some of our students will find themselves leaving Santa Barbara during spring break or during summer breaks to do outreach in the communities to understand what it's like to be part of a small neighborhood clinic or to understand that big medical field. I have a UCSB student who was a tour guide with us. Um, she did our UC DC program. So that's our Washington DC internship program as a UCSB student. Now, if you're thinking, why am I talking about Washington DC and internships? The answer is simple. She knew she wanted to have experience in a large medical trauma center. And what a better place than to be in the nation's capital in Washington DC. So she had an internship. She was there for three months. She worked in um, in one of the larger uh, one of the larger hospitals. She came back going, "I never want to do that again. I want to be in a small suburb somewhere." But it was a great experience for her as an undergraduate student to get college credit, to do an internship in medicine, to find herself still on track to graduate in four years, and to build her resume for not just medical school but her own professional desires as well. So great options and opportunities for our students. I'll showcase the URL so that you can scan through all the different student clubs and organizations at the end of this presentation. Okay, questions. Uh, does UCSB have employment on campus for students? <laughs> yes, we do. Over 3,000 students uh, work on campus in some capacity. While the library is actually one of our largest employers, recreation is another one. Um, we do have some students who will find themselves working in our health and wellness department, um, putting on organization, uh, sorry, putting on events, um, you know, things like dog therapy day. Um, there's also um, internships that are more formal. Things vary across campus. Um, my tour guides are employed at UCSB, so I pay them to give campus tours. So those are all jobs on campus. Okay. Um, how many, or sorry, uh, what are the average sizes for classrooms? Ooh, that's a good question. And the answer is, <laughs> it depends. You might have a small seminar series, that small class that happens to be with, you know, no more than 20 UCSB students and one faculty member. That is usually a one unit discovery class. And then there might be some research courses, there might be one on one faculty interaction for seminars. But the reality is, if you're talking about your introduction biology class, that could be 200 people in the lecture. And then you're talking about 30 to 35 people in the lab. Why? Well, lab space is limited. There's only about 30 to 35 seats in a given lab. So you'll find that the lecture, we can teach general biology or general chemistry and all the concepts to a larger group, but the lab space is smaller. So it will vary from class to class and it will depend on your freshman coursework through your senior coursework as things will change and shift in size. Woo! Okay, but the fun thing about UCSB when it comes to lectures and when it comes to courses, is that our faculty are teaching our lectures from your introduction biology class, chemistry class, calculus class, to your senior seminars. It's faculty that are in front of you. So it's those experts in the field, often experts who are doing research in what they're teaching. The textbook might be from the individual who's standing in front of you talking. So that's the exciting part for our students. And that's also why many of our students find themselves in labs and undergraduate research quite frequently. Why? Well, because there's less than 3,000 graduate students in UC Santa Barbara's structure. So UCSB doesn't have the number of graduate students it needs to conduct all of the research that we're funded for. So undergraduate students have the opportunity to raise their hand and say, hey, pick me, I want to be in your lab, or I want to be part of your research project. Some students will find themselves being part of research subjects. So in our psychological and brain sciences major, you might be the one who is um, answering questions and doing workshops as part of research. Or you might be the one actually conducting the research on your peers. Pretty fun and exciting for many of our students. Okay. When it comes to our students getting involved, what you're going to find is that preparation is the key. If you're looking at UCSB, we are a competitive campus at both the freshman and the transfer level. 
So our freshman applicants should take math through their senior year of high school. This will help you because math is a foundation for your undergraduate degree. It's also a requirement for your medical school or your post-grad um, enrollment. So having a solid math foundation will help you when it comes to preparing for your degree. Now, if you don't have advanced calculus or if you don't have you know, advanced this or that, don't stress, but keeping math in the forefront of your four years of high school, that's what's relevant and important. Now for my transfer students, your major will matter. As I said, if you're a, a math major or if you're in one of our 10 biology majors, major preparation is actually what I'm looking for, not I get C, not an AA. It's your, your preparation for your major. So if I'm a biology student and I was worried about my language for IGETSI, but I didn't finish my, my biology series, you're in trouble. So note that our major preparation guide off the admissions website should be downloaded, should be checked off as the requirements of our particular programs, specifically again for our students in the sciences. Okay, let's see if there's any admissions questions that you've asked as I've talked right now. Uh, question. So if you applied as a biology major and want to go into the health professions as an optometrist, how does that work? Do counselors help you take classes that surround your career choice? Great question. So you know that you want to go into optometry or into dentistry or into some field. Oftentimes students will be in a science major because that coursework is preparation for your postgraduate degree or your postgraduate certificate. So you're learning the foundation, you're learning the science behind what you'll do to use that science in a health field. Now, some students will take that science coursework as their electives while they major in something else. Maybe you are majoring in film, but you're taking a side coursework of biology. And together, that's your four-year degree. So you're preparing for your postgraduate health career, but you're also adding curriculum that's not health-related. Maybe again, you're working on a documentary on health and that's how you feed both passions that you have. Next question. Does UCSB have counselors that guide students through their four years? <laughs> of course we do. Not in the same fashion as high school though. You're not assigned a counselor. Miss Acosta isn't your counselor that's gonna follow you for four years. What you're going to find is that advising is across the board in different areas. So you're gonna have an advisor in your major. So that biology, that environmental studies, that history major, whatever it might be, there's a, a professional staff member who works with undergraduate students, the undergraduate advisor. Many departments also have peer advisors, so current UCSB students who work with the advisor to answer a lot of the general questions, right? And then there's advisors in your college to make sure that you're progressing towards your four-year graduation. In fact, about 5% of our students graduate in less than four years because they come in with AP, IB, or dual enrollment, running start college credits. Some of our students will find themselves in a really solid place to do that. Most students though are finishing in four years. That is our goal, getting you in and finishing in four years if you come as a freshman applicant. Our transfer students, you're in a two to three year path depending on how much major preparation you've done, which is why we really want you to do your major preparation at your community college so that you don't elongate your UCSB time to degree. All right, Whew. let's see. If you're majoring in a humanities major, is it possible to double major with biology and be on the pre-med track? <laughs> yeah, it actually is. I have a tour guide who double majored in dance and chemistry. I know, totally opposite, right? Now, when she was offered admission, she was uh, able to audition for dance. And then she told us she wanted to be a chemistry major. And because she told us chemistry, she was in line to take all of the science classes that she needed. Now, in her particular instance, and she's an exception because it's two completely opposite majors, um, what you're going to find is that she had to work with both departments and both advisors to line up her classwork so that she was on track to graduate in four years. She did. 
She got into orthopedic school. She is now quote unquote fixing ballerinas as her career. So it's pretty fun and exciting to see students who have that duality, that left brain, that right brain interest. And if that's you, I'm gonna applaud you and say, don't let it go, follow both passions. All right, let's keep moving on because I do wanna make sure that I answer some more questions. So what can you do right now in order to prepare yourself? Well, note that part of the admissions process is not just about GPAs. It's not just about exams. Some of you are having to put your activities on hold, for example. So a question being asked is, what should we be doing during this stay at home order to increase our admissions? One, I don't expect you to do a lot during the stay at home order. It's a stay at home order, which means that there's some things that are just not available to you. Maybe you were doing that hospital internship, that Raggedy Ann program. Maybe you were following a dentist and learning all about what it means to make molds. Maybe you were just doing some general research and now you can't get out of your house to do that general research in a lab. Note that you can find yourself looking at videos and tutorials, understanding the differences between health professions. It's a great way to use your extra time. Hey, you're watching today's webinar. That's a great way to use your extra time. Note that when it comes to this time period, the admissions office across the UC campuses, we've been told to be extremely flexible and generous with students when it comes to not just their academics, but their extracurricular activities. Some students have started blogging. Some students have started looking at how to give back in their community. I don't have an expectation, and none of my colleagues have an expectation of what you should be doing during this stay at home order due to COVID-19. The first thing you should do, take care of your health and well-being. If you're a future health professional, you should know that. Okay, but when you're ready to get back out there, when the stay-at-home order has been lifted, note that 50% of Santa Barbara's admission is based off of life outside of the classroom. And that's your life culturally, that's your passion, that's your hobby, that's your talent. Are you an artist? Are you a musician? Are you someone who loves to think in scientific terms? Do you love puzzles? We don't actually have a checklist for what you should be doing. Instead, we'll look at what you've accomplished and we'll give you credit based off of what was available to you, what did you take advantage of, and from that, what did you learn? So be sure to add that in, our, in your application review for us. And that's inclusive of all of our high school applicants. For our transfer students, remember, it's about major preparation and also your ability to showcase your academics for us. We want you to follow your passion and we want, know that for many students, it's a little scary thinking, oh, it's so dark and dreary, not knowing that, you, that, that there's no medical school at UCSB, that, that, that I don't have a degree that says health on it. Okay, but let's look at the positive, shall we? The bright light, the beautiful, the campus structure that is UCSB and see the possibilities. Well, many of our students find themselves really competitive in their postgraduate admissions because of the opportunities that UCSB offers. I wanna highlight a few of our alumni who are in health careers. These are individuals that I personally know, so I'm gonna brag about some of them. I'm gonna start with one of our faculty, one of our, um, our alumni who is in New York. So Dr. Michael Koch, who happens to also have been one of our uh, UCSB trustees. Now, Dr. Koch is a plastic surgeon. Um, I know that much of what he does is really thought of in, in a, an aesthetic, right? Oh, you know, a, a nose job or, a, 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 you know, fixing this or lifting that. But no, he actually works outside of the U.S. and he does clinics where individuals are able to see, you know, transformation based off of plastic surgery for their life circumstances. And Dr. Koch, well, it's pretty exciting for him. You know, when he was at UCSB, he attained his Bachelor of Art in Biology. So he got a BA in Biology um, and then graduated and went on to medical school. Um, he actually trained at UCLA Medical Center in Los Angeles, California, before he completed a fellowship in aesthetic plastic surgery in Lenox Hill Hospital in New York City. Um, he's amazing, and what you're going to find is that 
what he loves is the interdisciplinary nature of understanding that you don't have one career path, right? In, in his quote, in my field of medicine, there are now mathematicians, sociologists, you know, anthropologists looking at problems in different ways. And that's a really cool aspect. It's not just gonna be linear thought that's gonna find a cure for COVID-19 or for the next thing that comes about. It really has to be different ways of looking at it and searching for it. So I wanted to point out Dr. Koch for you. I also wanna point out that for some individuals when they're thinking of medicine, they are thinking of nursing. I wanna be very clear, UCSB does not have a nursing school, right? If you're like, ah, oh, but many of our students who leave us will find that they're well placed to find themselves preparing for a nursing degree. Um, I want to point out Javier Moreno, who happens to be on UCSB Board of Alumni. Um, he's currently working at UCLA Medical. Um, what you're going to find is that for him, he used the community at UCSB to really help him build his skill set, to help him find the opportunity to really take advantage of his skills. And sometimes when things were a little rough or he wasn't quite sure or he had self-doubt, it was the gaucho community that really supported him. Um, he happens to have been a first-generation college-bound student. He majored at UCSB in both Spanish and political science, and then he went off to the University of San Francisco to finish his MSN degree. We're really proud of Javier. I wish I had been able to put in his new photo that he sent me this morning. I missed the opportunity to do so. Um, but what is really exciting is that he gets to work in an area that's really exciting, but he gets to use his UCSB degrees to help him with those. So think about it. He's in Los Angeles. He's in a place where Spanish is a dominant language. He has a Spanish degree. When you're navigating a hospital, you're also navigating politics. You're understanding the different places and people and how they move about. So his two UCSB degrees are helping him just as much, <laughs> well, not more, but just as much as his nursing degree. So it's an exciting thing to see a UCSB undergraduate student move on into those particular areas. Um, a few more, and then I promise we'll take questions. Um, Marisol, who happens to be one of my favorite individuals, um, UCSB um, alum as well, her major was cell and developmental biology. Um, for her, what's exciting is that she had a, a big support system at UCSB, but it was a challenge of, of being different, of, of knowing that, you know, she was coming from a household where everybody was like, yeah, you're gonna be a doctor, right? And that can be scary sometimes when everybody thinks, okay, yes, you're gonna do it, that's, that's gonna be it, right? Her professors helped her succeed. Again, her professors who were teaching her undergraduate classes, not that one or two random person, but every one of her classes was taught by a faculty member. That's a big achievement because they know you by first name, you know them by first name. That's a great way to build some letters of recommendation as well. When you understand your faculty's point of view and they understand you personally, your accomplishments, your life goals, you have that ability to have those conversations and those, you know, well, that networking as well. Um, and then I'll end on this particular note with our alumni spotlight. Um, Castulo de la Rocha, who is um, really in an exciting place. So you might think, okay, health, I'm a doctor, I'm a plastic surgeon, right? You've got those very structured areas, but nonprofit health organizations. So if you've ever heard of Alta Med in California, welcome to Castulo, who was the pioneer and the founder of Alta Med. So nonprofit healthcare for now 50 years. Now granted, when it comes to this particular type of medicine and, and this administration, what you're going to find is that many of our students know they want to go into a health profession, but they may not necessarily have the skill set. I might not be the biologist. I might not be able to pass calculus, <laughs> right? But I know I want to go into those fields. So there are other professions that will assist in that particular area. And I think Castulo is a great example of someone who took his skills and his understanding of medicine and business and merged the two together to create a nonprofit organization that has over 3,000 employees in the state of California. Pretty exciting for a UCSB gaucho. All right, I've said gaucho three times. Do you know that that's our mascot? <laughs> UCSB gauchos, yeah. So many options and opportunities for our students. 
Now, I want to make sure that I'm answering your questions. You've asked a lot of them in the chat, in the Q&A box. So let's go back to those. All right, here we go. How many graduates for 2019-2020 are in the health field? Ah, well, I don't have an actual number for that particular question. I'm sorry, but I can tell you that um, what you're going to find is for many of our students who are looking at our pre-health program, we don't actually have a cap for registration. We don't require an application. For UCSB, should you wish to enroll in the pre-health program, and that's if you have a 2.0, a 3.0, a 4.0, we will allow you to enroll. We don't restrict based off of a GPA platform. Some colleges do. What you're going to find is that we'll cheer you on, we'll help you through. Um, realistically, what I've heard in the past is that students with a 3.5 GPA or higher tend to be more competitive into medical schools and or postgraduate programs that have a health field. So note that those particular students I know have a, a, about a 45% admit rate, give or take, and that is above the national average. So kudos to those students from UCSB. My tour guides, I've got students who are in Albert Einstein Medical in New York. I've got students who are in John Hopkins. I've got students across the, you know, different UC medical schools. So I know my students are prepared. I get to see quite a few of them as they're my interns go off into the medical fields. And I spotlighted a few of them in our presentation as well. All right, next question. Uh, one of my passions is working with low-income underserved communities. Is there any volunteer internship options that are offered that highlight this? Yes, there are. Um, I wish I can very quickly go back, but I apologize for giving you the whiplash. One, two, three, four, five. Um, what you're going to find is that there are a few programs. Global Medical Training, Street Health Organization is the big one. One of my interns was part of this, and this is outreach and, and community work that has a health component to it. Sometimes it's as simple as campaigning for how do you get health coverage. Other times it's more complex in understanding what is an immunization and really doing that street campaign and organization. Yeah, thanks for asking that question. All right, uh, question. Regarding getting medical internships, you mentioned the places students go. Is it difficult to get meaningful longitude shadowing experience? Are these competitive? <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be competitive. You're gonna find that there's a few hundred, if not more than a thousand students who are looking at health fields at UCSB. Now, what you're gonna find is that they're not all in the same place. So it might be a graduating senior versus an incoming freshman versus a transfer student. So the skill set that you bring will change your competitive level. If I haven't taken basic chemistry or if I haven't taken introduction biology, I'm not gonna be as competitive as a student who has that already. So there are different fields. There are also lots of opportunities to do work that's more organizational. So that's where the student clubs come in. So you find yourself really understanding the different, you know, uh, community efforts, public more, uh, relations, marketing, and things to that nature. You build those networking opportunities. But again, you're not competing with students at a graduate school level. So while competitive, it's still realistic to think of it as an undergraduate experience. Okay, next question. Um, this one is, with the interdisciplinary aspect of UCSB, how difficult is it to enroll in classes outside of one's major? Would being in the honors program give students priority? Okay, great question. Here's what you should know. Registration for your classes at UCSB, well, for our science students, so that chemistry, that biology, that physics student, anything that, that, that's science-based, those students will have priority in science coursework as incoming students. So incoming freshmen, incoming transfer students. If I'm undeclared, I don't need chemistry or biology. So I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna be told to wait until all my students who need it register for it. So this is where the game of, oh, I'm gonna come in as undeclared and then switch backfires. If you know you want to be a science student at UCSB, tell me you wanna be a scientist. If you get admitted into UCSB, then you get admitted usually on a pre-science major, pre-biology, pre-chemistry. And all that means is I'm going to make you take some sequential 
coursework in science foundation work. If you can pass it, you're in the major at the end of your sophomore year. Yay, exciting, that's it. Well, are, are they impacted? No, if you can pass the coursework, you're in the major. Yay, I know, exciting, right? So many of our science majors have chemistry, they have biology, they will have calculus as the curriculum base, which is why many of our students in the health fields will look at science as a potential major. But don't limit yourself there. You can always add a second field or you can switch into a second field as you're working on these particular courses. I'll point out that many of the health career postgraduate requirements, if you do a Google search, will tell you of classes that might be required or suggested, right? You might have a suggestion for general chemistry versus organic chemistry. You might have a suggestion for psychology or sociology, but you're gonna find that we offer the suite of courses that are there at UCSB in many of our science curriculum. So exciting for our potential students in those fields. Okay. Is it difficult to sign up for impacted science lab courses that are required for your tree health track if you are in the humanities program? So I just answered that question. You really should be a science major to start off with if you want to get into that science track. But note that once you're in that track, you can always find yourself with an advisor talking about those humanities or social science majors. Question, okay, here we go. Due to this year's circumstances, how would the AP credits be calculated and utilized for 2020 AP exams? Ooh, all right. So the AP exams for um, spring 2020 are going to be take home or are home-based exams is my understanding. Well, the University of California made an announcement. The spring 2020 AP exams will be granted credit just like any other year. A three, a four, or a five on an AP exam will earn you college credits. Those credits will be equivalent to the coursework that we've posted on our AP translation chart available on our general catalog. I'll share the URL with you at the end of the presentation. So yay, you're gonna get credit for it. I know, it's a different test, it's an abridged exam. What, what, what? Yes, you're good. <laughs> Excuse me, okay. So is biochemistry considered a major that is on the pre-med track? I think biochemistry, any of our sciences can prepare you. Some of our students will do things like psychological and brain sciences at UCSB, that brain science aspect. There is a BS, a Bachelor of Science degree in that, that students find really great. There's biopsychology, there's environmental studies that has a Bachelor of Science degree as well. There are lots of options. I'll show you the majors page shortly. Okay. Next question, is it possible to graduate in less than four years despite wanting to enter the medical field or do you suggest completing our undergraduate years within the four years? That's gonna be an individual situation. I can't give a blanket answer to that, but I can say that for many of our students who have advanced coursework in high school, maybe they're already taking that college level calculus, that college level biology, that sequential course that's at accredited college or university, those students will find themselves able to fast track. But I don't always recommend it because you really do have quite a lot of coursework that needs to be completed. But again, there are always exceptions and situations that I can't give a blanket answer. What you should note is that it's a great opportunity to speak with your advisors and for many of our students the first time you speak with an advisor will be during orientation. In orientation our uh, advisors from our colleges will sit with you and talk to you about your requirements for your degree so they'll tell you what biochemistry needs, they'll tell you what psychological and brain sciences needs as it pertains to your preparation for a four-year degree and whether or not that could be fast-tracked. Okay, uh, instead of having double majors, can you also have multiple minors? Yes, what a great question. Lots of our students will look at our minors and find themselves really excited about the opportunities that, that exist there. Some of our students will do very specialized minors. Um, they're looking at you know, public policy, they're looking at um, things that are really personal to them. So maybe it's LGBTQ studies, and that allows a student to sort of see how they can use their skills in a population that they'll be working with once they're done with their medical track or postgrad career. 
Is it better to get a BS or a BA? Ah, well, the Bachelor of Science tend to have tends to have more math and science curriculum, so that would always prepare you for postgraduate. Again, it's going to depend on the curriculum that you select, and it's going to depend on you as a student and all the fun grades that you're getting. All right, let's keep moving on. Um, let's see, next question. Uh, I know that there is Goleta Hospital and Samson Clinic for med students to build up their resume, but I heard that there tends to not be many opportunities for clinical research due to UCSB having no med school. Could you give me some thoughts on this type of experience and UCSB students? Ah, okay. There are research projects that are in collaboration with some of our health partners, and you're going to find that those research projects are inclusive of our 10 national research centers at UCSB, from the Kegel Autism Center that's on campus. Um, there's a lot of options and opportunities, and research can often be found that is in a field that's maybe not what you think of, right? So we were doing um, work with the NFL when it came to helmets and brain concussions, for example. So what you're going to find is that you're thinking, wait, wow, where was that? Well, it was in our psychological and brain sciences major. So it wasn't necessarily this thing where you're thinking, oh, psychological and brain sciences or psychology, that's where I'm gonna find something but it could be. So many of our students are surprised what our faculty are doing research on and how that might relate to a health field, not always necessarily tied to a hospital or a clinic. Okay, um, next question. Are there any online research programs for high school students during the summer? Ooh, online programs, that's interesting. I will point out that UCSB has two pre-college programs for students who are leaving their sophomore or their junior year. So this is class of 2021 and class of 2022. Those pre-college programs are accessible to you on our summer session summer sessions website. There are research mentorship program and our SARA program. So options and opportunities for you there. For our newly admitted students at the freshman level, we do have a freshman summer start program. Um, and we do have for our transfer students, Transfer Edge. Now those programs at the moment are scheduled to be in person, but given the stay at home order, you don't know and I don't know if those summer session programs that freshman summer starter transfer edge will convert into an online program instead for this year so stay tuned all right how hard is it to be with an honors college course load to stay in the honors college and on the pre-med track I don't know personally because I wasn't in the honors program, but my students tend to find it accessible to them. My students who are in the honors program will find that they were invited into the honors program as an incoming freshman. Where? Where did I get the invite? Did I miss the memo? If you got admitted to UCSB, go back into your UCSB applicant portal. Under congratulations, you got admitted and above the box that says, yes, I'm coming. If there's a blue icon that says honors program, you were invited into the honors program. If you don't see that blue box there, then find that for incoming freshmen, you'll be able to apply at the end of your freshman year for the honors program, pending that you meet requirements. Now, the honors program is a great opportunity for students, but it is a smaller program, and students have to opt into the honors program if they were invited. Not everyone does. Some students would prefer distinction in their major. It's another form of honor, but within your department. So there are opportunities, and those opportunities can often overlap with your preparation for school um, for postgraduate programs. So yeah, you can totally do it. Whew. All right, next question. Where can I find more information about the pre-dental organizations? Let me showcase for you a few things. So I'm going to switch my sharing. Let's see, okay. We are gonna go and share here. All right, so hopefully you're seeing on the screen the opportunity. So UCSB student organizations, go. And the first thing that pops up is our Office of Student Life. Now, when you click on this little link here, 
it will take you to browse our student clubs and organizations. These clubs and organizations are pretty consistent from year to year. So if you wanted to look for something based off of that sorority or fraternity, or if you wanted to search with dentist, I have to put in dentistry. There's our pre-dental organization. So you'll be able to click the link and see the differences or get a mission statement listed for you there. So that's a great starting point. Again, this URL is going to be off of our Office of Student Life website. I'll have it at the end of the presentation for you. Okay. Do admission track demonstrated interest and are UCSB, is UCSB admissions need blind? Ooh, no, we don't look at demonstrated interests. I don't care if you call me, email me, I don't care if you come to visit. I mean, I do care because I want you to see campus at some point once campus reopens. I want to answer your questions, but no, it's not part of the admissions process at UCSB. So no need to worry about that. We do want to keep track of what you do so that we can help advise you, so that we can see where your interests are, so that we can invite you to programs like today, but it's not a requirement to be able to be admitted to UCSB. Okay. Are the classes for honor students faster or different? What advantages do these honors program students get? Wow, we are stuck on the honors program. All right, the honors program for UC Santa Barbara, what you're going to see is that many of these students are part of um, discussion sections with faculty. They're part of graduate student loans in the library. They are able to have priority registration within the residence halls. If you're an incoming freshman or sophomore, there's learning living communities that are inclusive of a scholar's floor. So there are perks and benefits. But a student who's really driven can find themselves having these opportunities. Um, they can find themselves interacting more with faculty by taking those discovery seminars. They can really get involved with research. So it's still possible even if you're not in the honors program. My best advice for students who are a little stressed out about class registration and this idea that you can never get classes is that we all have the opportunity to talk to an advisor and to create a plan. Students should do so uh, as they're working through their degree. And as you're getting ready to, to register for classes, if you can't remember how to do that, don't try to figure it out on your own. You can always ask for help. And our advisors in all three of our colleges, the College of Engineering, the College of Letters and Science, and the College of Creative Studies, all three colleges are fantastic at working with students. You just have to ask. We also have support programs for our first generation students. ONDAS, Opening New Doors and Accessing Success, EOP, our Educational Opportunity Program. For our transfer students, the Transfer Student Center, those are great resources as well. And oftentimes there are advisors that work in those centers or in those departments to help students navigate all of these registration woes. If you're not stressed out about logging in or how to select classes or how to search for things, you've got that all situated. When your past time comes and you're getting ready to register, you're not fumbling for things and losing opportunities. You're on the ball, you're making your mark, you're moving forward, you're graduating on time. Okay, uh, next question. How much collaboration is there between undergraduate and graduate students? For example, I was accepted into the bio psych program and would love to interact with neuroscience graduate program students. Ooh, interesting. I want to say that there is interaction, but the actual percentage or the time allotment, I'm unable to answer at this time. So if you want to email me, I'll do some research for you. Next question. All right, here we go. I understand that admission and stuff is competitive. Is the actual academic and social environment on campus also competitive? Ooh, I love that question. My tour guides, I have about 100 tour guides, will say this over and over again, which is UCSB is collaborative, not competitive. So many of our students will find themselves working together in team projects. I have a great example of three tour guides that were on the pre-med track. Um, Two of them went for an internship and they actually were interviewing uh, one after the other. And the first one walked out saying, I totally bombed it. I can't believe I forgot to talk about this and the other, don't forget to do that. And people were kind of surprised, like, why are you giving your friend advice? And, and she was pretty frank about it. And it was that well, if I can't get it, then I want to make sure she gets the internship. And, and if she's the better candidate, then she deserves it and should do the same for me. 
I've heard that story in different areas and in different ways, but I think that's one of the gaucho ways is to really be collaborative and it's to build each other up so that all of us can pass the finish line. You know, I like that. I really appreciate that of UCSB students. Okay, next question. Do engineers at UCSB pursue medicine? Question mark. Yeah, some of them will find themselves in medical research. Um, one of our mechanical engineering alumni was working in a lab. She gra graduated from UCSB, went to Boston U. Um, she was in a medical research lab um, working on prosthetics. So note that it's really interesting the different paths that students take based off of their skill set. And that's why I don't want to give you a path. You have to be a biology major, you have to do this, and then you have to go to medical school. No, some of you might be great, again, film majors, and you end up doing film documentaries on medicine. You now know all the terminology. Some of you might be great administrators. Maybe you're that next nonprofit medical um, system founder, and you see all of the different options and opportunities available to you. All right. We're going to finish up with putting on the resource slide for you as we get towards our last five minutes. Some of these questions I won't get to, but don't worry, you can always find an answer. We'll make sure that we email them to you by the end of the week. So let's move on. Can all med school pre prerequisites be completed as an engineering student um, their junior year at UCSB? Probably not their junior year, no. Um, I think you might have meant, can a student in the College of Engineering work on their prerequisites? It'll depend on your major, how accessible those are. My computer scientist won't have biology as a requirement. My computer scientist won't have chemistry as a requirement. So those classes may not be as accessible to them in their freshman and sophomore year. Those are the students that might have to do summer school in order to grab those classes and add them to their curriculum. But if you're looking at a curriculum in engineering, like chemical engineering or mechanical engineering, where the science foundation is there, you might find that it's only one or two extra classes that you have to complete. All right. Can you join regular sororities and be pre-med as well? Yes. You can be in a panhellenic or a multicultural sorority and still be part of the health organization advising and prepare for medical school, veterinary school, to be a physician's assistant and et cetera, et cetera. All right, are there any uh, pre-vet internships or other opportunities, especially with large animals at or near campus? Ooh, so there are a few shelters that are around campus, and I do have one student who's going on the pre-veterinary track. Um, I know that she works with a nonprofit organization. Um, she helps there. Um, I do also know that Santa Barbara and the surrounding areas, there are quite a few um, polo fields. Santa Barbara is uh, near a really affluent area. Area, so you're going to find that that's there. Whether or not those internships are really accessible, that I don't know. So that would be a research aspect for you. But they're around the area. You're going to find that um, about 20 miles north of us is a lot of agricultural field, which means lots of animals. Ooh, fun and exciting. Okay, let's keep going. Um, what are medical sororities like? Ooh, good question. Um, medical fraternities and sororities are often pre-professional programs. So they will have advisors that will come in, they'll have professionals that will come in that will establish the opportunity for you to really understand the field. They can also be social in nature. They can help with internships and networking. So options and opportunities there. Ooh, all right. Question, if I want to go into a very specific field within medicine, will UCSB connect me with people in those fields? For example, nanotechnology or um, genealogy, do the hospitals have OB internship research programs? That was a really long question and I'm glad you asked. So Santa Barbara is a campus that is working as part of the California Nanotechnology Initiative. You're going to find that we partner with UCLA for that particular program. So many of our research in the um, College of Engineering happens to have a component there. Whether or not it's really accessible, that will depend on the faculty and who they're looking for and the qualifications of the student applying to those programs. But yes, it exists at UCSB. Whew, all right, next question. Uh, if I'm interested in a, 
I think I just answered that question. Sorry. <laughs> Next question. Um, is there a time frame that you can try out classes or switch out in a space that is, per if space permits for classes based off of how comfortable you are taking them? So when it comes to finding your major and finding your fit, some students will find themselves spending their freshman year discovering what they want to do. So for an incoming freshman, yeah, there is that luxury of being able to, you know, test out the waters in chemistry versus biology versus psych and brain sciences. Um, we actually ask you by the end of your sophomore year to pick a major and to prepare for your pre-major. So your two years, freshman and sophomore year, is built to help you prepare for all of those biology, chemistry, and calculus classes. Now, if you're a transfer student, then we had hoped that you'd done that before you come to us, which is why major preparation is often a review for our selection process. All right, question. Uh, if we'd like to do summer classes in order to help grab our needed prerequisites faster, would we be able to live on campus during that time frame? Um, not always. And so housing on campus can be limited during the summers. Many of our students will find themselves subletting in our college community of Isla Vista. But what's really exciting, so I know that there are a few of you who are from outside of California in this webinar. For our non-resident students, UCSB summer sessions does not add a non-resident fee to it. What? That's right. Summer session is not more expensive during the summers for our students outside of California. It's the same cost if you're from New York, New Jersey, Virginia, or if you're from California during the summer. All right, friends, we're wrapping up this webinar with some resources. I remind you that the AP translation chart is on our general catalog, which you see there. Our health career exploration, if you're looking for those different health fields, trying to figure out what's the right fit for you, there's a great website. It's at the bottom of the screen. I want to point out that many of our students find themselves looking for majors. What is it that UCSB offers? So our students will find themselves oftentimes looking at these particular programs going, what's the right fit? If you go to the admissions webpage, why UCSB, you'll click on majors and you'll see not just the pre-health advising link, but also a list of all of our programs and you'll be able to jump onto their websites so you can find yourself scrolling and going, oh, tell me more about psychological and brain sciences and how that might fit for my desire to be a neurologist or a brain scientist when I'm out of UCSB. You'll always find that there's a research link that will showcase what research is happening and those research links will often tell you that type of faculty that you're gonna connect with. We do have a lot of resources on campus. We do want to be the right fit for you. So I'm not saying that we are the campus you have to go to, but I'm saying don't count us out because we don't have a medical school. If you're interested in a health field, we want to showcase your options and opportunities. We got your back, yes we do. If you have more questions, don't forget that UCSB's website um, is inclusive of a social media page, including our at UCSB Life Instagram account, where many of our current students are answering questions. They'll be able to ask those housing questions, the additional admissions questions, things about those sororities that you didn't get to answer, to, that you didn't get an answer for today. You'll be able to email us more questions through the UCSB For Me account as well. You'll see that on the upper left hand side of the screen. I thank you so much for your time. I am hoping that this was beneficial to you as you prepare for your future in a medical field. I wish you all the best of luck. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay indoors. Thanks everyone, have a good night.